I apologize for interrupting the good conversation, but hopefully we will uh, pursue and, and have another conversation now. We uh, obviously welcome you to this very significant event, and I'd want to uh, just suggest you look at the, uh, the artwork for a moment, the bronze synergy by Gary Price, because it reflects basically what we're all about tonight and reflects much of what we're all about in our department in terms of the respect that we have for the contributions made in the history of our department by many people and certainly by the beauties during their era here and in the years following their era here on campus. And uh, it would be an understatement to say how grateful we are that they are here tonight, and more importantly, that they're here tonight because of how we want to honor them and the gratitude we have for the leadership and the involvement and the synergy they've brought about, not only in the leadership relative to the university, but in their personal lives that they impact other people. And this is a very, very special evening for us, for the faculty, and our students, and our staff, and the department of special education at the University of Kansas. And it's important and significant for a number of reasons. Of course, most importantly, the opportunity to honor Gretchen and Jean. But it's also an opportunity for us to continue doing what we've tried to do on a number of occasions in recent years. And that's to communicate a perspective that we have in our department. And that is that an academic department that strives to do, but, do best is all, not totally, but significantly dependent on others, on the leadership of the institution. And we've also become particularly sensitive to the fact that the kind of leadership that is so essential to develop and sustain the culture like we have at the University of Kansas cannot be underestimated and may be far more rare than we think it is. We're not so naive to believe that having quality faculty members and strong students and good, good climate is enough to become the department that we aspire to be. And when I say aspire, that is true. We hold strong aspirations for the future and we do know where the source of the energy is that comes to us, and it is in the institution, the heart of the institution. In, in 2007, we celebrated our 50th anniversary, and it was, of course, our birthday. But we refer to it as an anniversary because when you think about anniversaries and golden anniversaries, that's no small achievement in itself. But most anyone can have a 50th birthday. So we try to think about it in the anniversary context. And what occurred that year was not only planning for the event, but some reflection. And when I say reflection, I mean serious reflection on the part of everyone engaged that year as we thought about our 50th anniversary and how we came to be what we were at that time. And that serious thought caused us to really come to understand how significant the culture of a university is, how significant leadership is to what an academic department becomes. And we found ourselves in a situation where not only did we realize that synergy was significant, but we also found ourselves in this admission that we didn't do it by ourselves, whatever status we had achieved at that time. And to some extent, it was more than admission. It was a confession. And you know, it was good for us. It really was to address the fact that we didn't do it by ourselves by any stretch of the imagination, whatever it was that we had achieved. But there were significant contributors in all dimensions of the university and also in terms of our students and they did wonders for us by what they did for themselves, what they did as they left this institution. And that confession, if you will, um, 
causes me to say that this evening, while we're excited to recognize Gretchen and Jean, but we're also, I think, equally enthused about the fact that we did make that confession because now we can move on in terms of other aspirations that we have. And it was in that context that the Robert Dole Humanitarian Award came to be. It was at that time that we began to really realize in an academic department, you know, what's it all about? And it's all about what comes together in a synergistic way to make a difference. We began to realize also something that was quite uh, significant too in the same context, and that is that, um, you know, it's a good life being a professor. It's a protected life in many ways, being a professor. But what was so significant, I think, at that time, you know, was to realize what goes into allowing us to do what we do as professors and researchers and to feel very good about it. You know, even under those times when, you know, maybe like all professors, we thought things could be better. That's a kind of always probably true of professors in universities. But it was a good realization on our part, and um, we're thankful, I think, truly, that we made that realization at that particular time, that year. And when we thought about how we ought to make that more public, the Humanitarian Award came into being in honor of Bob Dole. Um, the senator was the inaugural recipient and that means he set a pretty high bar. The senator is internationally known, not just nationally known, for the contributions he's made to public policy, the contributions he's made to quality of life. And I'm sure he says and would say that he's had a great quality of life. At the same time, he's made a man, many, many sacrifices and still feels good, I'm sure, about the quality of life that he has had and has then set forth to make that uh, a part of his contribution to society and the state of Kansas. And in doing so, he's impacted the university in many ways, and he certainly impacted our Department of Special Education at the University of Kansas and created, I think, a kind of spirit that while we cannot achieve, nor probably emulate, that we can sense on his part, and that has been significant uh, for us. The second recipient, recipients, if you will, of the award, Ross and Mariana Beach. Ross is now with us. We appreciate him, his contributions, and yours, Mariana. And I would say to you that over the years, your influence at the University of Kansas on families and family support it's not limited to the University of Kansas. The number of people, the number of students who leave this university have an experience which you made possible through the Beach Center, go on to other universities, and that's quite a domino effect, and we thank you for that. And I'd also say, too, we thank you for your early work in Latin America, Mariana. So if you'd stand up, we'd like to recognize you. The third recipient is Richard was and is Richard C. Schiefel Bush. My goodness. Now, I want you to stand up, but I don't want you to dance. Now, you may think that's an inside joke, you know, but uh, he's very good at that. He is a sought after dance partner. But, no, yeah, stand up. If you want to do a jig, all right. <laughs> Yo, all right. There we go. <laughs> I, re I remember well, Dick, a, a small group of us joined you for lunch, and we shared with you not only our desire, but our full intent to present the Robert Dole Humanitarian Award to you. And you did it as you did. And you do, only Dick can do this, and I can't do it well. I don't have enough hair. But he goes like this, and he says, 
you know, I didn't do it by myself. All right? And he was talking about the 50 years of his contribution, and he went on, but to make a long story short, the theme that evening when we did present it to him was Dick Schiefelbusch and 50 years of collaborators. And he kind of made a very good point in terms of his history here. But without question, Dick, you are the uh, person who is responsible largely for the interdisciplinary focus at this in institution on disabilities from many dimensions. And, uh, and we thank you for that. Tonight, we're uh, honoring Gretchen and Jane Booty, and I really believe, when I think back over the several years that you were here, and the years since, and how not only did you impact us then, but you sustained that impact, and it will be sustained for a long time in terms of the impact on our department and the students we prepared who've gone on who just do the same thing and prepare additional students. It's quite a legacy that we are indebted to you for. But I would also mention, too, that the synergy could not be more appropriate than it is tonight. And I hope that as the evening progresses, you will feel that in, and know how serious we are about that and the significant difference it's made. And also the fact it's allowed us to make a difference we could not have done without your presence and your support and your continued encouragement. The senator is not here. His thoughts are, without question. And he has ensured us that Bill Lacey will represent him well. Bill, would you join us, please? Thanks very much, Ed. It's, uh, it's a real honor to be with all of you tonight, and it's an honor to meet the Butigs for the first time tonight. And it's also an honor to read the message from the gentleman uh, that I'm about to read. Uh, Dear Jean and Gretchen, my sincere congratulations on receiving the Department of Special Education Dole Humanitarian Award for your outstanding service to the disability community. I'm sorry I can't be there in person to honor you both on this special occasion. Through your work as KU Chancellor, Jean, you helped foster the continued study, research, and awareness of disabilities, recognizing that the more we know, the better off we are as a society. Having endowed the Butig Teaching Professorship in Special Education, you have both made a tremendous impact on the future of this department. You should be commended for your generosity and commitment to a field of research and study that is all too often neglected. Your vision at the university has elevated the study of disabilities to new heights. I, for one, am grateful for your accomplishments, compassion, and dedication. Thank you for all you continue to do on behalf of those with disabilities, and congratulations on an award that is certainly well-deserved. God bless America, Bob Dole. Thank you, Bill, and thank you, Senator. This occasion is one where not only do we think about tonight and we think about the past, but we think about several people. And I'd like to introduce some special people, some people who shared the era, the time that Gretchen and Jean were here as their collaborators and people we all know, significant members of the university community, retired in most cases, but not retired in terms of the contributions they make, nor are they retired in terms of any context, in terms of our missing them as we think about how the university has progressed and fulfilled its mission. So I'd like to introduce to you some of these special guests, and let me begin with, uh, well, let me first say it was a tough decision of which one to introduce first. But in due respects, Gene, 
I'm going to introduce one shorter than you. <laughs> Del Shankle and Carol Shankle, would you please stand? Very good. They both have held many roles in the university, and, and, and Dell may ha have held the most roles in the university, but served as chancellor and in many other contexts, and uh, we are extremely pleased that you are here. Uh, Bob and Janice Cobb. Very, very pleased and appreciate your joining us this evening and as we celebrate this occasion and the beauties. And Bob, of course, the distinguished career as dean of the college and also executive vice chancellor and a, a person who has mattered many people over the years. Thanks for joining us this, this evening and thank you for all that you've done. Uh, David, Mary, Kate, Ambler, would you stand? All right. I am sure, without stretching anything, that, that you were on call a few times by Chancellor Beauty in terms of Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs. Uh, I, I can recall a few circumstances in which only your talent would have helped. So we thank you very much and for your many contributions as a collaborator during those particular years. Howard Ginger Mossberg. Hey. You, Howard, besides being Dean of Pharmacy and also Vice Chancellor of Research and Graduate Studies, where he made significant contributions in both, always brought an entrepreneur spirit about anything he touched. And um, that all paid well. And we all appreciate and respect what you've done, Howard. And during that era, it collectively made a significant difference, and we thank you. And I want to also mention Dolph and Pam Simons. You know, if there's a family in any college community, by family I mean more than one generation, that's had an opportunity to observe a university, a research university, and to know every chancellor and to have an impact, it must be the Simons. I can think of no other circumstance, and we do appreciate the lineage and the families. What we're going to do now is to, by way of introducing the Beauty Guerra, and Gretchen and Jean, we have developed a video that spans a number of years. And it will begin before they arrived. It will begin early in terms of the Department of Special Education, which has experienced these 50 years without a name change. No one has tinkered with our name yet. All across the country, our departments, our peers, have changed names for a variety of reasons, but we have not. So we're going to watch this video, and we hope that you will uh, sense our concern tonight, Gretchen and Jean, for the meaning of synergy, and the meaning of respect, and the, and the, and the real meaning that um, we hope we can convey in our real, true understanding of what an academic department needs and we've benefited from, and we thank you. So with that, now he's not here, but he's under, has this under control. We'll begin with the video, so. the University of Kansas, a great place to build a first-class academic department. <music> Students come from throughout the world to pursue their education at the University of Kansas. They leave the University of Kansas confident in their abilities to be successful and to make a difference. They also leave knowing that wherever they go, they are amongst the Jayhawk Nation, and there is a professional community awaiting them. This is also true for those who come to the University of Kansas to study special education. 
our graduates have a legacy of making a difference in teaching, research, leadership, public service, and in contributing to a knowledge base that knows no cultural bounds. Some return to the University of Kansas as professors and researchers because the University of Kansas is a great place to be. What makes KU a special place is well known by all who have shared the experience of being a student at the University of Kansas. They are Jayhawks for life. Their memories of Mount Oread are forever with them. But what makes a world-class academic department at a public university in the middle of the country? Why do the best of faculty come to the University of Kansas to pursue their careers in special education? What keeps them here? Why are they so well known in their profession? Why do students from all over the world come to the University of Kansas to study in special education? There is no simple answer, but there is an answer. The culture of this university has really provided the conditions that I think are essential to building the kind of quality program in special education. Those who pioneered work with children and youth with disabilities, as well as their families, had a vision. And it happened to be here at a time when the leadership of, at KU was inclined to share that vision, as well as to provide the kind of nurturing environment which I don't think existed at other institutions throughout the country. By the 1970s, over one-third of all sponsored research dollars coming into the University of Kansas was in support of some aspect of meeting the needs of the disability community. The interdisciplinary focus on disability was clearly established. The Department of Special Education was becoming a significant graduate program with the capacity for national leadership. The Bureau of Child Research and within it the Juniper Gardens Children's Project were significant research partners. Like all graduate programs, the special education department was faced with many needs that were difficult to fulfill during an era of unprecedented growth in public universities. While some needs would go unmet for a few years, the interdisciplinary focus of the University on Disability was moving forward. It was during this era that the federal initiative in university-affiliated facilities was implemented, and KU successfully competed for grants that resulted in building the expansion of Haworth Hall on the Lawrence campus, the Herbert C. Miller Building at the Medical Center, and a facility at Parson State Hospital and School, all committed to housing programs related to disability. The Special Education Department, along with other programs committed to the study of disability, moved into Haworth Hall on the Lawrence campus and into the Herbert C. Miller Building at the Medical Center. Over the next 10 years, the Center for Research on Learning and later the Beach Center on Families and Disabilities emerged as significant contributors to the interdisciplinary mission on behalf of individuals with disabilities and their families, and productivity took another step forward. By the early 1980s, shortly after Jean Budig arrived as the new chancellor, it was becoming apparent that if the department was to reach its potential, a number of things needed to be achieved. Some would be costly. Others were rather intangible, but equally important. It was a time in which most special education faculty members were in their mid-careers with aspirations and marketable resumes. They were where they needed to be in terms of initiating research programs and demonstrating teaching skills. It was not a time of discouragement or complacency on the part of faculty. It was a time of readiness for what needed to be done and what was about to come. But it was also evident to many, including Jean Budig, our new chancellor, that there was an element of vulnerability that focused on faculty understanding their value to this university, to KU and the expectations in which the department was held. Special Ed was not alone, however. There were other departments in the same situation. This was no small challenge for a new chancellor facing an historic capital campaign. But something woven into his administrative style was also clear. 
As a Midwesterner, he quickly embraced the culture of the university and with his unobtrusive and quick study manner began the process of understanding the academic strengths and needs of the campus. The interdisciplinary array of academic and research programs centering on the study of disability quickly became evident to him. The Department of Special Education was central to the observation that this collection of programs had established a valuable legacy that had stood the test of time. Most of the key researchers and faculty who contributed to building the programs were still here, along with a very strong and complementary group of well-established younger colleagues. It was apparent that in this changing world, the significance of their work was still ahead of them. What began to occur was more dialogue with central administration on discussions and responsiveness to inquiries from the several interdisciplinary departments on campus, including the Department of Special Education. There's no startling increase in resources, but there was a growing sense that needs were known and this translated into confidence in the future. Faculty continued their good work, and the department soon realized its first number one national ranking. This was a significant achievement, but most importantly, it represented the achievement of an institutional environment where the interdisciplinary and collaborative focus was systemic and would bode well for sustaining such recognition in the future. As the space needs for interdisciplinary programs returned and intensified, Chancellor Budig sought consultation from Senator Bob Dole on how best to meet the needs of this national resource of programs so important to the disability community. And I'll be very honest, I'm very reluctant to get into special interest types of legislation, but it seemed to me that this was an area where KU was far out in front, became a national leader long before I became involved in this idea, so I'm simply the instrument. I didn't do anything. Uh, you've been doing it here for years, or, or it wouldn't have happened. The result was a partnership, and on August 25, 1990, the Dole Human Development Center was dedicated as the new home for the Departments of Special Education, Human Development and Family Life, Speech, Language, and Hearing, the Center for Research on Learning, and the Schieffelbusch Lifespan Institute. This opened additional space for the Beach Center on Families and Disability in Hayworth Hall. For the first time, a wide array of programs serving the disability community through teaching and research were housed together. This also meant more students, more work in communities and schools, expanded research, and continued momentum. A major outcome was unprecedented growth in research productivity, which continues today. Just 10 years later, the good news of growth again spawned an increased need for space. These needs were not unique to the Department of Special Education as there were space needs all across the campus. There were aspirations for every building site on campus from several departments and professional schools. A decision was made to renovate and convert the Joseph R. Pearson Residence Hall into a new state-of-the-art home for the School of Education. In the year 2000, the School of Education made the move, along with special education and the Center for Research on Learning, to a new home. Now this move separated special education from many of the collaborative relationships that we had formed with interdisciplinary groups. Uh, however, it brought the department into much closer contact in the same physical setting as our other colleagues in the School of Education. And this was at a time when it was extremely important for us to do that. Today, the academic and research programs in special education continue to grow as they address emerging national and international needs. A team of colleagues in special education was recently awarded the largest grant in the history of the University of Kansas. With increased productivity comes space needs, the cycle continues. The development of world-class academic departments does not just happen. They happen because people join together over time to make them happen. Institutional leadership makes the difference. Chancellor Budig, along with other chancellors throughout the history of the University of Kansas, played a major role in building a culture supportive of interdisciplinary approaches to developing and sustaining high-quality academic and research programs. When you also have faculty who are committed to a cause 
in our case, it's the quality of life of students with disabilities and their families, then you have just the right mix. As faculty thrive, students are attracted and then goals are achieved. You know, the challenge really becomes sustaining the conditions to retain faculty and keep them challenged. The conditions essential to faculty engagement and retention were well known to Jean and Gretchen Budig. On the occasion of their accepting a new challenge, the Kansas University Endowment Association created an endowed teaching professorship in the School of Education. The uniqueness of the professorship was that it was to be awarded annually, in contrast to the more traditional professorship awarded to an individual for life. In 2002, Jean and Gretchen chose to create the Beauty Teaching Professorship in Special Education and continued the focus on an annual award to faculty. In 2002, the first Beauty Teaching Professorship in Special Education was awarded. The significance of the teaching professorship has been, and continues to be, the meaning it brings to the faculty in special education at the University of Kansas, where teaching is valued, faculty are recognized, and students succeed. As faculty retire, the culture is here to recruit the best next generation of faculty. The culture builds. What we see today at the University of Kansas is a level of academic maturity in the special education department that only comes with the right institutional culture, a committed faculty, and friends like Jean and Gretchen Budig. You know, kind of more of an intimate conversation. Okay. <laughs> you know, I would uh, direct your attention to the piece of art. There's a little discussion of this piece in your program. And Sharon and I were having this conversation as we admired this, reflected on synergy. And I suppose he would make the change. It's worth talking about. We thought it'd be nice if there was an obvious lady's arm. That was nice of you. So. <laughs> We may follow up on that. <laughs> but I want you to know that there may be an, an explanation in terms of our feelings about Synergy and about the two of you that comes from what we are. And the field of special education is a field that is very closely tied to the family. Uh, recognize that there must be Synergy within a family that has a child with a disability, and that there must be synergy within the support systems that are around them. And I think it goes without saying that we also recognize that in leadership, in higher education, in probably any organization, but certainly in higher education, that there is a personal synergy that every leader must have, and that is with those closest to them. And so tonight, we want to make sure that you understand how we're looking at Synergy and looking at the two of you as we make this award. And it's not breakable, all right? <laughs> and it is heavy. So the home of the award is here mm -hmm. at Dole Institute of Politics, and there's nothing political about that. It's a significant home, and this is a major venue, and one that we will return to every year. Bill's been very gracious, and we've held this occasion here every two years since we began. And we're very pleased to share this with you tonight, and I um, want you to know that uh, there could not be more sincerity than what we have in our appreciation for you. So, we thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give you a hug. Bye. Thank you. I really if you'd like to comment, you're yeah, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Let me walk down here. Yes, please. You can even join him if you'd like. Okay. You may. <laughs> Several quick stories. One is a political story. Uh, when I was president of West Virginia University, a comprehensive research university, 
uh, we had great growth and success, and we, in large measure, were successful because a gentleman named Robert Byrd was our senator and protector. And he did many miraculous things as majority leader and lived, uh, well, he was the longest serving member of the United States Senate. But when I f decided to come home to the Midwest, uh, I talked, I was at a bowl game uh, in Florida and Bob Dole was on the phone with Robert Byrd. And I'll tell you an interesting story. They were talking about the new chancellor coming from WVU. And, you know, WVU was sorry I'm leaving. Kansas was happy that I was arriving. But I'm going to tell you a story. For those of you who have nothing to do, Bernadette, like you, nothing to do or worry about, I would suggest that that was a period of beautiful politics that mattered and was meaningful. Democrat, Republican, but more important, two great men who could come together on tough issues, especially revolving around education and sensitivity to special education. They both felt a deep commitment and never turned their back on special education, and I remember it vividly because they would simply say, we'll get it done. We don't know if it's this year, but for sure next year, but they usually got it done in one year. They were both persuasive, powerful, honorable, and sensitive human beings on the subject of special education. My, wouldn't it be nice to have more of that today, if you think about it? That sort of was what I thought government was about. Compromise, coming together, doing the right things on major issues. But they were a model for me, certainly, in the area of education. I was asked the other day an interesting question. Why did I have a special interest in special education? Well, let me tell you why. It's a very personal thing with me. I can remember going to a parochial school in McCook, a very small town, and there was an anger in me when I would go to school and see students that were ignored, that no one knew what to say to them, how to respond, how to embrace them. So what we did is we backed away and assumed that all would work out. That's not true. It didn't work out for many, many years for most of these people. And I had a deep feeling of guilt in that someday I wanted to be in a position we, by the way, introduced the doctoral program at Illinois State in special ed, and that's, we were the fourth largest producer in classroom teachers. I tell you, I, I was easy on the subject of budgets for special ed, carried it on at West Virginia, but unique, this place is so unique. Let me tell you, it's worth mentioning. The way I budgeted, I never decided until the very end what I would put into the operational budget. I always had two or three directions to go, but I relied heavily on my colleagues who've been introduced tonight. Boy, they were smart and gifted, but they had the same weaknesses that I did. And it worked like clockwork. I would get a call from Professor Schiefel Bush, he never called me. He just had to drop by just when we were gonna decide the budget. No special reason. <laughs> then I would have Ed Mayan, who I appointed as Dean of Education, Provost, and Ed said, you know what, we ought to just talk. I mean, 
we're thinking budget, but there are a couple things you probably ought to think about again. Here it was. And then the coup de grace was Frances Horowitz. She had a skill that was so unique, you were guilt ridden. If you didn't at the last minute add to an already very generous budget for the school and the Department of Special Education. It became known that I was a real patsy for them, because I was. And the people around me shared that same feeling. I, you know, if I did do it over again, I would, and it was for that reason that Gretchen and I have endowed 15 teaching professorships, and it's so good to meet a number of you who've carried those. And we also thought we want those to go to areas of the university that have had difficulty in raising money. We could always raise money with engineering, uh, business, law, but they were only a piece of the university. This was the centrality of the university. And I always found it ironic that why don't we do more for them? And Gretchen and I are going to fund, by the way, five more. We'll take it to 20 uh, teaching professors. And we're, we're very happy to do it. And uh, it's also neat. Uh, do it while you're alive. The greatest feeling is to receive a kind note from a thoughtful faculty member. Gee, I keep those things, and I read them three or four times. And Gretchen reads them, and it's then that, that we have to do more, and we think. So I've done it with my private life and giving, uh, and I will continue to do so. I always did uh, as a university president, and I was one for too long, 23 years, that's eternity. But you know what? I do pretty much the same thing again in values. And Gretchen, do you want to say anything? You sure? Okay, it's half yours, kid. Thank you very much. It, you know, this is a great honor, and we really, really have deep feelings about Senators Byrd uh, and certainly uh, our truly distinguished friend from Kansas. He's the best and deserves the best. And he would have made a marvelous president, especially for people with special needs. You know what? Just the last thing I'm going to say is the day we the day we broke, no, it was the day we completed the Dole Center. I went over early, and more, there was Senator Dole by himself in the building, and he wanted to talk about what it was like in his life to go to public events and seeing the crowd, the people, they didn't know how they should shake his hand, what they should say. And he said, it's really a deep hurt that you felt, even though they were supportive, they were good friends. But just think of the many people, as he said, that feel this every day. And unfortunately, there aren't enough hands reaching out. What a, what a good person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Words we will remember. In introducing Elizabeth, still our new chair, <laughs> just a few months, I'd also refer you back to probably the last six or seven images of faculty members that came across on the video 
and you'll know they're younger than me, but they are symbolic and representative of what goes forward. And I honestly can say that most are here because of the conditions that you've created, both of you, your colleagues and such, and others over the years. So we thank you again. And I'll let Elizabeth close us out. Thank you. Thanks. Events like this don't happen all by themselves. They're very special people who have thought long and hard about how to make this event happen, and I want to recognize them um, this evening. Ann Turnbull, uh, Ed Mayan, Sandra Gott, who formed this amazing team and brought this to fruition, designed and thought about that script for the video, and I want to give them all a special thank you for the work that you did. And there's somebody sitting in the audience who um, is leaving us at the end of this uh, at the end of this semester, who's meant an incredible um, amount to our department and really symbolizes this notion of synergy, who was proposed to on seventh and mass and is only leaving because of true love. And I believe there's uh, somebody sit sitting there who proposed to her, Carol Cheveria, and her new honey, Dennis. Is that right? And none of this would have happened without her amazing organizational skills. And so I want to just thank her for that. And to remind her, like all of you, that the university is a place that has very big arms and embraces everybody who's been here. Um, and we want you to feel that you are always part of the, this incredibly vibrant community. And thank you for being here tonight. Um, all of the special ed faculty is so appreciative of your support. Thank you so much. <laughs>